Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? Just a difficult loss for the Philadelphia Flyers as they fall 6-1 to to the Buffalo Sabres. And it was an embarrassing loss, as Coach Elaine Vigneault said after the game. If you are part of this team or part of this coaching staff, you should absolutely be embarrassed. And the good thing is, they get an opportunity tomorrow to bounce back against the same team and make some sort of statement. They started out the season 2-0 and and beating up on the Pittsburgh Penguins. You could argue, though, that there were a ton of mistakes involved in that, in that two-game stretch, specifically the second period in the second game against the Penguins. There were so many odd man rushes, so many two-on-ones, and I think you saw a similar situation occur in this game. Like, the outcome was almost deja vu. Gustafson with turnovers, getting beat to lose pucks, losing puck battles. And when you had the puck on your stick, when you finally did, you were making poor decisions and allowing the Buffalo Sabres to get grade A chances going the other way in transition. It's just ridiculous and it can't happen. At one point in that first period, I believe it was, I saw so many times Gustafson's turning the puck over in the D zone and that allows Eichel to get a good chance. Him and Skin are having a 2 on zero, and then Gustafson ends up hitting the guy who's swinging down low, and then within seconds, there's a turnover right inside the blue line again, and the Sabres attack that way. It, it's unbelievable what I saw. Not a strong game out of Carter Hart. He got yanked, and at the time, I was questioning, because before the game, A.V. made a statement, we are going to have Carter Hart start on Monday, and then we will have Moose, Brian Elliott, play in game two I didn't know if this would change the mindset of the head coach and it's pretty clear as he alluded to you're going to get Moose in this second game of a back-to-back but there's so much in play here right Matt Niskanen not being involved anymore is that a correlation with what you're seeing defensively and the fact that Sean Couturier is not available as well I mean that is damaging to what you have You look at the top dogs of the Buffalo Sabres. Jack Eichel, three points. Taylor Hall, three points. Then Reinhardt got on the board twice. And Lazar gets on the board twice, which was wild to see. That wicked backhander, though, to start the scoring. As much as I can't stand the Buffalo Sabres, you got to admit, that was a filthy, filthy bingo. And that second goal, by the way, The tripping was in play. You had a tripping penalty. And then you also had a situation where Carter Hart behind the net, not his strong suit. It's obvious. And you even saw it against the Penguins as well when he tried to get the puck and whip it down ice. Sidney Crosby knocked it out and then scored with one hand. He has an issue with puck handling, and that has to get sharper. He needs to get better at that because that's the difference. If you remember last year when they were playing the... Montreal Canadiens, Carey Price, who's one of the best to ever do it, but how many times would the Flyers dump it in to try to establish a forecheck? And here comes Carey Price putting it into an area for his defenseman to come in, get good um, protection when he gets behind the net, and then they can settle down, get their forecheck, or excuse me, sheesh, I'm all over the place here, and get their breakouts going. Not only that, he can utilize the boards to get a quick up, and then the Montreal Canadiens would maybe be able to get some sort of rush generated off of that. My point is, the difference-making plays that can happen when you are strong playing the puck as a goalie, it's crucial. And right now, he's actually costing the team. Now, Carter Hart is special. He's sensational. I absolutely 100% think that he will grow in that area. But right now, we are living through the tough moments. Now, we are broadcasting live from the Manscaped Man Cave, by the way. You get 20% off and free shipping with the code BROD at manscaped.com. It was actually so disturbing that A.V. decided to switch up some of the lines. So in the third period, you had Claude Giroux with Kevin Hayes and Travis Konechny, Oscar Limblom with Frost and Voracek, JVR with Nolan Patrick and Joel Farabee, and he kept that fourth line the same. And that fourth line that fourth line in the first period, they stood out to me with a lot of effort. They were the only line that came with a little bit of buzz and came with a little bit of life. There was some bad moments involved, but there were some strong ones all 
offensively as well. And at times, they got matched up with that Eichel line. And this goes back to something I said when it comes to A.V. and and part of his philosophy that I heard him speak about just a couple interviews ago. If you are okay with allowing your PK guys to go out there against opponents' best on the penalty kill, why can't you trust them on on five-on-five play? I thought there were strong moments for this line when that happened, and I thought that there were some ugly ones as well. But specifically early, they were rolling. They were creating some offensive chances. They were cycling the puck. That went away quickly, though. That did fade, unfortunately. But it's pretty clear that AV sees something in those lines. Then speak about the D pairing. Provy with Sanheim, Gustafson with Myers, and Haig with Braun. And this is after the moves occurred. This is after the coach was not satisfied and he was somewhat trying to create some spark. The third period wasn't as outstanding for the Buffalo Sabres. I thought there was a mini pushback by the Flyers. They eventually got on the board, and it was Obe Kubel, and it was that fourth line that made that happen, but it was so out of reach at that point, and the Flyers, I know they tried to make some sort of statement, but it definitely wasn't powerful enough, and tomorrow, tomorrow will be very telling when it comes to how this team shoots out of that tunnel, how this team responds from such a devastating loss, because there's a difference between losing 3-2, to two, losing 4-2, to two, and then getting your ass kicked. I even tweeted this out during the game, anytime, anywhere, my ass. They just didn't show up, and I'm disappointed in the leadership group. I saw Claude Giroux. I saw the top dogs out there where the Sabres are just making plays happen in the offensive zone. Come on. Come on. It's just unacceptable. Show me more than that. It was about the effort. They had four shots in the first period. They got outshot insanely. And when the Flyers did get shots, it wasn't like they had these great scoring chances, a lot of perimeter shots. And when you watch Travis connect the last game, when you watched him, what did he do? He got to the crease. They went to the net. You had none of that. You had no offense generated. It was abysmal. What happened? Came out flat. And I don't know if they overlooked their opponent or if they were smelling themselves, but there should have been no reason for them to do that because even though they won their first two games, it wasn't as if it was this perfect outcome by any means. The scoreboard might have read that, but you know, when you're in that locker room and you see some of the defensive breakdowns and you see some of the issues with the odd man rushes and when you see the D-zone play not being so congested, And what I mean by that is so much time and space for the opponent, regardless the outcome of the games, you know that. You're aware of that. I knew the Sabres would have a sense of urgency, though. You saw what the Penguins did to the Capitals Sunday afternoon at 12 o'clock on NBC, right? They lost two to the Flyers, and then they found a way to grind one out and win in a shootout. There's something to be said about starting out 0-2 and then moving on from that team you just played twice and facing a new opponent. You want to definitely say to the league, hold on, fellas, hold on. Let's see a new opponent. Let's see a new team. Let's prove to everyone that first series, all right, it's behind us. We have a different identity. That's not really who we are. I knew the Sabres would come out with a sense of urgency. I just knew it. And they sure did. They dominated all over the ice. First to lose pucks. How many times was it five on five, but it felt like a damn power play? And you even heard the broadcast talk about it. Jim Jackson and then Keith Jones. This isn't even a power play. Here they are with vision, with their head up, using the points, walking the blue line, giving it back to the wall, cycling down low, somewhat looking like an overload power play, nonchalantly just making plays happen and and dishing the puck around. When are you going to get on him? Stick on puck, go finish your check. Go to your guy. Take away time and space. How about you use your brain a little bit and and realize what they're going to do? Jump the pass. Get in on them. Be physical. Look at the leadership group tonight. Huge Claude Giroux fan. Always have. The outrage towards him is pathetic. 
But this is a night where I need a little more. Voracek, you too. You want to call out Mike Sielski? You want to make some comments? Back it up. Didn't like it. Just didn't like it. And it's so hard to really analyze a player like Morgan Frost, even though after the game, Elaine Vigneault said he liked some things that he did with and without the puck. It's so hard to really dive deep into what Morgan Frost gave you tonight because the team gave you nothing. It was a dud. And I'm disappointed. And it's fair to be disappointed. And it's also okay to recognize that these type of games are going to happen. You're going to have a dud. This was a little more, though, than just your casual loss. And that's why tomorrow will be extremely telling. If we get another game, a third game in a row, where it is constant two-on-ones, it is constant turnovers, and it's constant brutal odd man rushes, what are we going to say about this D-zone? And are we going to say, well, it's only Sean Couturier. Sean Couturier would fix that hole. Is it? Or is it Matt Niskanen? Everyone fell in love with the two power play chances that Gustafson created in that first game. Well, they forgot that there's a whole nother side. Gustafson was so sloppy and poor with decision-making tonight. Unlucky at times, sure. But I think that just describes what type of mentality he had and what type of effort and and poor decision-making he had all throughout. He lacks in that area. There was a problem when he was in Calgary. Now, he was awesome in Chicago. Who is he really? What's his identity? Will he be able to return to what he was in Chicago? But I'm nervous. I'm nervous about this decor, and and I got shredded for that. It's reasonable to be nervous about this decor. You lost something so impactful. Provorov was able to be Provorov because Matt Niskanen was there. Mr. Reliable. You knew that he was going to be so smart and make the right play and allow for him, Provorov that is, to go be him. In theory, well, Justin Braun's a defensive defenseman. So why can't he just play that style and allow Provorov to be Provorov? Because Justin Braun stinks. Because Justin Braun is not a top D pairing guy. He has a role. Stinks is harsh. I'm a little disappointed tonight. All right? That's an emotional stink. He stinks. That's an emotional stink. He's got a role. 6D. I wonder if we ever get to see Gostas Bear and if he gets thrown in the mix. But talk about defensive liabilities on this team. Doesn't that just add another one out there? You're going to throw Gustafson and him out there? I would like to see Provorov and Myers, and I know Myers is still going to have hiccups along the way. I mean, the guy's an undrafted guy, but I see so much potential in him. I think that's your best bet. I'm not saying it's a perfect bet, but it's your best bet right now with what is on your roster. You know, that one goal by Lazar, he didn't have the greatest gap in the world, and he tried to reach with his stick to get stick on puck. But it it was a crazy shot. I do really have to admire what he did with that and the way he utilized the post and gets it in on on a really nice angle and with velocity too, you know? I mean, it wasn't as if that was some soft backhander. And they always say it's so hard to read the backhander coming off of a stick when you are the netminder and then add that with the the power that was behind it. Uh, It was an impressive goal for sure. Uh, Real quick with... Morgan Frost, the first shift was very noticeable. He was in the offensive zone. They were working down low. They were generating chances. You got a power play out of it as well, but it wasn't as if it was sustainable and long-term enough, but he really did jump out of the shoot there with a little bit of speed, a little bit of passion, a little bit of just making plays and seeing what he can do so well, but it's really hard to to truly know everything uh, about this performance because it was one. That's why tomorrow I'm really diving in. Do not, do not give me this type of effort again. And I think AV's message is pretty clear. And I think that he he brings that out of his team as well. Like he's the style of coach where if you have a performance like that, oh, you are inspired for the next night. So I think, and a good way to relate this and, and what I'm talking about is John Tortorella. If you know you're not giving it your all for John Tortorella, Good luck. He's coming for you. He's giving you that. 
and he'll be in your face. Now, AV is not to that degree. I don't think it's as strong, and it's as strong of a presence as what John Tortorella does, where he's literally two inches from your face, and his his face is turning red, and he's screaming at Pierre-Luc Dubois, and then Dubois responds with a hat trick. It's not going to be to that level. But when he says something, and when he expresses how he feels, and when he says, I expect better tomorrow... There's that sense of urgency coming out of the locker room, and and I anticipate seeing that tomorrow. Five-on-five play, atrocious. <sighs> stinks. Just stinks. But what doesn't sting is being able to make money utilizing my friends over at DraftKings. The return we've all been waiting for is finally here. UFC's most notorious icon is stepping back in the octagon this Saturday. The official sports betting partner is DraftKings Sportsbook. The, prof- the official sports betting partner of UFC, that is. And they are giving you a shot to turn $1 into $257. That's right. New users can bet $1 on Br- McGregor to win by knockout in the first round. And if he does, you'll be cashing in $257. Bet a little, win a lot. It's that simple. While we're all excited for the weekend's premiere, let's not forget about the football playoffs. So head to the app now and check out their great playoff promotions. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use promo code BROGE when you sign up to turn $1 into $257 if McGregor wins by first-round knockout. Place your bet and watch the fist fly this weekend. That's code BROGE for new players to get $257 if McGregor wins by first-round knockout. For a limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Metters Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, we have some anytime hotline calls to get to. Let's hear from you out there. I tweeted it out, and you can follow me at Broads81. Flyers, dud. Voice your frustration now using the phone number 856-442-9805. So let's hear from the Flyers fans after this brutal 6-1 to loss where you just you, you needed a better effort. The outcome, I could have lived with the loss. You're eventually going to lose. I thought this would have been the game that you won and then you fell in the second half to the back-to-back if I'm truly honest. But if it's the other way around, I don't care as long as I get that outcome of 1-1 one and one so you can set yourself on a good foot of Three and one. So bounce back. I thought it would have been this one. A little disappointed. Let's hear what you had to say. Well, that sucked. And it really proves that this team truly does need need Sean Couturier. A lot of fans were saying, you know what? Oh, we can be like what the the what the Lightning were without without Stamkos. Now they have, don't have Kucherov. We'll be fine. Our team is deep enough. But you really need a guy like Sean Couturier, and it showed in this game. Uh, the lack of uh, keeping the puck in the offensive zone, the poor play in their own in their own defensive zone, it was just a mess all around. And I still think that the, it's not a cause for overreaction and being like, oh, this team sucks all of a sudden. But I think all the flaws that they had in the previous two games really came to light in this one. And it's time for them to start playing stronger and much more together. Take care, birds. Thank you so much for the call. I'll start with the Stamkos and the Sean Couturier thing. I don't know, like this is, this is how I kind of see it. When you think about Sean Couturier and you think about the depth of this team, this squad should be able to give you a better performance than tonight, even without Sean Couturier. And one of the strongest parts of this team is the next man up mentality. And I hate saying that because it really does remind me of those brutal Philadelphia Eagles. But I digress. With the next man up mentality, I'm not telling you long term you can go win a Stanley Cup without Sean Couturier. He's absolutely a significant piece to the success of this team on both sides of the ice. Right now, we're stressing the defensive side because of how bad it really is in that area and how much he really can help shut down the opponent's number one guys and how much he can make it a living hell for the guys on the other team. Like Jack Eichel is going to have such a different night and such a different outcome if Sean Couturier is shadowing him around when he's in the offensive zone. That's just clear as day and history will show you that. But with this team, like this 6-1 and effort was so bad and so unnecessary that 
there's a middle ground, right? Yes, this team needs Sean Couturier, but Sean Couturier is not the difference in that effort. It's not the difference in getting beat to every single damn loose puck. So that's kind of how I see this issue in terms of, oh, this team's going to be able to go win a cup like Steven Stamkos was unavailable for the Tampa Bay Lightning and they were that deep. No, I don't think it is to that level of deep. That Lightning team, though, whew, you think about how much they really have in that tank without Steven Stamkos. It's insanity. It is wild. Flyers, not necessarily there. But you're watching all the time and space for Hall and Eichel and Skinner. How many grade A chances did they really have generated off poor decisions? And then when those turnovers did happen, they were able to attack and pounce right the other way. Counterattack. Join in the rush. Fellas, clean it up. It's ridiculous. Bro, Ryan from Tampa. Obviously, you can hear the change in my voice. I don't know what team that was tonight. And as, you know, the players under Laviette knew and came out to, they had no jam. No jam tonight, no urgency. And literally, they said even during the telecast, it looked like the Sabres were on the power play almost every time they'd be offensively in our zone. So no one, no one, showed urgency tonight and that better change tomorrow the positive is there's always room to get better tomorrow's a different day tomorrow's a new day but you can't play like that against the bottom level team in our standings when there's only 56 games that's interesting. I don't know if I necessarily look at the Buffalo Sabres as some bum squad. Now, they always start out red hot, even though, ironically enough, they did not this season in terms of their first two games. But they naturally do start out hot, and then they, they fade, and they lose their buzz, and then they get fatigued, and then the fan base goes crazy, and it becomes a dumpster fire in Buffalo, just like majority of Buffalo sports. Although, Josh Allen and those Buffalo Bills are definitely making a statement I don't necessarily look at them as some trash team, some bad team with not a lot of talent. They have great players for that power play. They do have great forwards, and they do have players that can absolutely make plays. So it's not like an abomination of a team. They're just never really able to put it together for a significant amount of time. But I think there's definitely talent there, and the timing of the schedule does matter. In terms of no jam, and I say that because historically this team starts out very hot, but in terms of the no jam thing that was one of my statements throughout the game I, I, I put this out there that no jam tonight per sources as if my sources were telling me that the team wasn't able to go out there and give you all that juice that you needed I actually used the gif of Peter Laviolette I forget who was on the bench but he tried to like smack his hand or hit a hit a board or something he ends up punching someone right at the top of the helmet yeah, Peter Laviolette, that is the perfect way to describe what we witnessed tonight. There was no jam whatsoever from that bench, and there's no fans. So when there's no fans, you're going to have to be that support system. We see it happen with the Sixers bench. When guys make plays, they go crazy. You're going to have to build that within yourself and within the team and on the bench. Guys who are more vocal, guys who have more personality, guys that have that that excitement in their game and that they're more of these guys that have that, you know, personality out there. They're going to have to be led on and they're going to have to be leaders and they're going to have to generate that for this team because it's not going to happen from the fans because they're not there. So if it's 2 nothing, 3 nothing, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? I know starting a fight seems simple, as if just go drop the gloves. Wayne Simmons did that for the Toronto Maple Leafs in game one of this year, and then that started this comeback, and the Maple Leafs were able to score a couple goals. They generated some good chances, and they found a way to get that victory. You're not always going to be able to land that. You're not always going to be able to find that guy. If you're up 2 nothing, who's going to make that decision? It was a poor decision for who fought him against the Maple Leafs. It's like, yo, dude, why did you give them that spark plug? And guys are more aware of that now based off of circumstances. So who's going to step up in those moments to really be that guy? Really? Really? I knew we were going to have a loss eventually, but like that to the Sabres? Seriously? 
I can't tell whether or not the Sabres are really good or we were just really trash because we all know that the Sabres take off in the beginning of the season and then crash and burn in the end. So can't really make an evaluation at this point. But the Flyers got to stop giving us so many goddamn breakaways. Look like shit. And can we please stop doing the whole starting slow in the first thing? That's got to stop. Not a big fan of starting slow in the first. <laughs> Me neither. When you look at the Buffalo Sabres, and I think it's a fair question to ask, were they that good tonight or were the Flyers that bad? And I know I just stated with the previous caller, Ryan from Tampa, that you know they're not some bum team and they do have skilled players. But if I'm weighing those two tonight, I think that the Flyers were so bad that it made... Buffalo look better than what they are, but that doesn't mean, like, I'm not trying to knock the Buffalo Sabres. I still think that they have talent out there. But the Flyers' turnovers and and the fact that they're stuck in their D zone because they're not going after anybody, you can't give guys that much time to operate as if they can freely wander around your offensive zone and cycle. You're not getting up on guys. You got to take away time and space. You got to get physical in the corners. You got to let them know that you are going to be there. When they go in that corner, they're not afraid to get hit. They're not afraid that it's going to get physical. They're not afraid that they're going to get the puck taken away from them. What do they do? They'll cycle it down low. They'll have one of their other linemen pick it up with ease. They'll use their their defenseman. They'll activate the defenseman. They'll walk the blue line over. They'll get shots on net. I mean, it was nonstop. There was no pressure in the D zone. That's ridiculous. Get on them. Attack. Why just stand there? What are you going to get done if you're in the D zone with one hand on your stick looking around as if you're just anticipating them to to work the puck around? No! They're going to work the puck around the D zone. They're eventually going to find a slot and find the areas where they can definitely get the goaltender moving and find an open lane to get a good scoring chance and possibly put it past Carter Hart or Brian Elliott. Stay out of the box too, huh? Yeah, so... uh... Flyers with a big dud tonight. Carter, the two goals that he let up weren't really his fault, but the other two were. Um, defense was a joke. They turned the puck over an extraordinary amount of times. The game was awful, but we're going to bounce back tomorrow and win. Not really worried about that, but more offense too. Power play didn't look very good either. Got to bounce back tomorrow. Go Flyers. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. If they come out tomorrow and they win 4-2, to two, do we just look at this as, all right, one of those games, let's see what happens. You know? Like, that. that's really going to tell me a lot. What team do we get in the first period tomorrow? Fatigue's going to settle in for both teams, though. Both teams have the same exact scenario, so no excuses whatsoever. No, they were tired. No, they just went through hell the night before. Well, they did. They didn't go through hell. Did they go through hell? Absolutely not. Hell would be this 4-3 battle of physicality, a lot of hits, a lot of abuse, right? Like, brutal play. They had the night off, essentially. I don't even know if I could technically consider tomorrow a back-to-back. If anything, they didn't work hard. Buffalo did. The Flyers didn't work hard, so I guess I can't justify even claiming this a back-to-back after this effort. I'm so disappointed because all day long, I was thinking about this game. I woke up, I had my coffee, I did the interview with Mark Zumoff on Sports Talk with Bird. So if you haven't seen that, the Sixers play-by-play announcer, Mark Zumoff hopped on. I recorded that in the morning. I did the sports bash from 2 to 6. So we did that and all day long. I'm saying, damn, baby. I'm thinking, damn, here we go. We got a game tonight, fellas. And I sit on the couch and within minutes, it's like, dude, really? Get the legs going. Wheel. Get shots on that. No, no. Let's do the opposite, Broach. Please. Not much to say with this one. That's about as bad of a game that the Flyers have played in a long time. Um, Some things are becoming obvious early. I mean, the loss of Couturier, of course, is noticeable. But to me, the loss of Matt Niskanen is really standing out. 
I mean, Justin Braun cannot play on the first D pairing. I know he's filling in for Ghost, but he he can't be up there. And Eric Gustafson is going to give you something offensively, but he's going to provide you heartache and headaches defensively, throwing the puck around like a hand grenade. On a good note, you're back at it tomorrow against the same team, but on a bad note, if you lose to them again, it erases the two wins you got over the Penguins. So got to get it done tomorrow, got to bounce back. That's a great point. I honestly haven't even thought about the loss as if, oh, you know, they can lose tomorrow. Like, I'm just, I'm expecting them to win. That's, but that shows me a little bit my confidence in this team and who I think they are. I think this team is a different Flyers team. I think this Flyers regime right now has them in a different area than we are accustomed to. The old Flyers would lose this game. I feel confident that the message A.V. sent after the game, using the words embarrassing, saying that he's extremely unhappy with the efforts, saying they got beat to every single damn loose puck, saying they got outbattled, saying the Sabres kicked their ass. like That is important to the team and to the locker room and, and to what the coach is saying. I expect them to win, so I don't even think of it as a loss. I don't even think of it as a go if they lose. No! no don't make me look like an asshole. Flyers, all right? I'm going to feel real stupid if tomorrow night I'm coming on here going, I was wrong, and I stuttered there because, you know, that's something that doesn't normally happen. (laughs) All kidding aside, all kidding aside, just having some fun. Of course, we're all wrong at some point, right? Not in this business. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I love doing this Flyers content. It's so much fun. Before I let you out of here, I need to let you know about my friends over at Orbit Energy and Power. With over 20 years of experience in the solar industry, they're home to your solar experts in residential and commercial projects. Their solar program helps eliminate your electric bill completely. They offer flexible financing solutions such as $0 down. In addition, they will make sure that you receive all the state and federal incentives available for switching to solar. There's no risk and no need for investment. They also provide water purification systems, backup energy services, battery storage, and more. Check out all their information down below. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Let's see if they do it. I expect them to. This is a different team. Please, please prove that I am right. See you guys next time.